Praise God. Amen. I want to take you to the Word of God, and I want to share with you actually a, a second part of what I, I left you with. Amen. I'm sure you have no idea what I talked about three weeks ago. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Some may have it written down, but it comes from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1. And I shared on this, in, from this scripture, amongst many others throughout the past couple of weeks. I probably preached at eight different, eight different services in the past uh, week and a half or so. Amen. And we shared on many different things, but this is one of the things that I touched on. But more importantly, I, I did some reading of this chapter further beyond uh, preaching on it. And there was more here that I want to share with you today. So let's go to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, beginning at verse 5. Amen. We're in the King James Version of this. And uh, the, scripture, the scripture is one that I'm sure many of us are somewhat familiar. It says, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois, and thy mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded, also persuaded, that in thee also. It goes on to say, therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Stir up the gift that is in you. Verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Some of you, I'm sure, are familiar with this passage, and we shared about it three weeks ago, stirring up the gift. Somebody say, stir it up. Stir it up. We need to stir up the gift that was, is within us. I was sharing with you a few weeks ago about revival. And in sharing that, we were talking about the aspect of revival meaning to return back to a state uh, that was originally intended. There was some state that we were in. I was shared in one church, amen, that we hear so much about revival. And in Kenya, they talk a lot about revival. We need a revival. We need a revival. And the concept of revival is very different depending on who's speaking it. I mean, here in the United States, when we in the in our churches and we talk about revival, oftentimes we're talking about having a pastor, a, a minister come in and preach for a few days or a week. That's a revival. In other words, we're reviving the church overseas in Africa. When they talk about revival, they talk about reviving the spirit. Amen. Looking for a great returning of people back to Christ. Amen. But revival is not necessarily about something new. Revival is about refreshing what already existed. There's an old song that we used to sing by Andre Crouch that says, Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first believed you. Because the concept of that song is there was a place that I had with you that somewhere along the way I lost. I had it, but I lost it. Consider that for a moment. I had it, but I lost it. I had a connection. I had a relationship. Some of us, amen, and some of those who have been married understand what it is, amen, to have a, a, a relationship that you begins to fall apart over the course of time. I had to cancel, counsel a couple while we were there in Kenya, amen, who was struggling after about eight years of marriage, amen, all kind of stressors come into life, and they found the relationship to be a struggle, questioning, amen, so young, but questioning whether this marriage continues on, and what they need is to get back. I told them, you got to remember why you got married in the first place. What was it about each other that you enjoyed, appreciated, valued, because other things have gotten in the way and distracted that, but you need to get back to remembering why you loved each other from the beginning. That's the concept of revival, to return back to what it was that you had. Amen. I need something, God, amen, that will stimulate me the way I was stimulated. When I surrendered my life to Christ, when I first received the Holy Spirit, when I first spoke in tongues, when I prayed all night, and when I fasted and touched and, and, and received something from heaven, Amen. By just calling on your name. Revival is to resuscitate, to bring it back to life again. Because sometimes over time, things in our life and in our spirit begin to die. 
they begin to fade away. The energy, the power, the anointing, the passion that we have can get so distracted by so many other things that move into our lives. Amen. The Bible warns us. Jesus warned us of this day, of the day of the cares of life. Amen. These distractions that come in and cause us to be distracted away from the things of God. We need to be revived. Amen. But I've said last time, in order for us to truly get revival, we first of all have to recognize that something's gone. Because oftentimes we get comfortable with our new realities and we think that's just the way it is. Some marriages, amen, they had a time of joy and happiness together. And after a while, you're just coexisting and you just feel like, well, that's just the way it is. There's no need of me expecting more, anticipating more. We have a tendency to adapting to our circumstance. Sometimes in our walk with God, we adapt to our current realities. Well, I'm just busy. I got to go to work. I got these things going on. I got this family issues. Amen. I'm just used to it being like it is. We come into the church and we we receive or uh, experience a certain type of service and we just get used to that. Sometimes we get used to it rather than being passionate about what we may have lost or missed. You have to first recognize that you've lost something before you start looking for it. If you have something in your house that may be valuable, but it's always been in a certain place and you don't realize it's gone, you're not looking for it until you suddenly realize where my car key is at. Amen. It could have been a long time. Amen. Before you drove the car. But now when you're ready to drive it, where are my car keys at? Amen. You get ready to turn on the television. Where's the remote control? I didn't realize it was missing. So I wasn't looking for it. But now that I need it. Amen. Just like Samson. Amen. He was comfortable in the lap of Delilah. Did not realize his strength was gone until he had need of it. And then all of a sudden, where, where's my strength at? I should have strength right now. He wasn't looking for it because he did not realize it was gone. Sometimes you have to first realize, amen, my relationship has slipped. My connection has slipped. My, my position with God, my anointing isn't showing up like it used to. The things that God put in me, amen, I'm not being revealed through me like they used to be. There was a time, amen, when God would speak to me, when I would hear his voice in the morning, where I was led by him and knew it was God talking to me. But if you're not careful, you can become distracted by the things of the world and not even realize you've lost what you used to have. Revival. Amen. Is a responsibility for us to remember, amen, what God has put in us. And that's exactly what it is that Paul is speaking to Timothy about here. He says, it's already in you. He says, I know it's in you. Amen. Even as it was in your mother and your grandmother, that same spirit is in you. And I confirmed it through the laying on of hands in you. So I know it's in you, but here's what you've got to do. You've got to stir it up. Stir up the gift that is in you. He gives this instruction to Timothy. Stir it up. It's already there. You just got to stir it up. It's still in the mix. It's still in your spirit. Amen. But he says this now is on you. You've got to take the initiative. I hope somebody's hearing what I'm saying today. Amen. You've got to take the initiative to get back and go back and stir it up. Oh, y'all not hearing me yet today. Amen. There can be things that God has already instilled in you, power that has already put you a calling in your life, purpose in your life. Amen. But if you're not careful, you'll walk right away from your purpose because you become distracted. But Paul says, look, it's up to you. It's already there. You need to get back, shake yourself. Amen. And stir up the gift that is already in you. Somebody say, stir it up. Got to stir up that gift. Been sitting down too long. Amen. Been distracted too long. Casual too long. Had too many other things getting in the way too long. Amen. It's up to each and every one of us to stir up the gift. Amen. That God has put inside of us. 
The scripture goes on, and that's what I shared about last time, but when you continue down past verse 7, you get into verse 8 and verse 9, and I began to read this, and it's an amazing thing. You can read the Bible so many times, amen, but there are th times when God reveals something even more to you than what you had seen before. The scripture continues on here after that, and he says, Be thou not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, speaking about himself in prison at that time. He says, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. I'm not going to talk about this today, but I want you to understand there's a correlation that is given here and elsewhere, amen, between stirring up your gift, amen, and enduring and partaking in suffering. Mm. If you're going to stir up your gift, there's going to be some problems. There's going to be some opposition. There's going to be some resistance. Amen. I'm not going to talk about that today, but I just want you to understand. Amen. If you stir it up, you're going to have to deal with some things. Amen. Hallelujah. But go on in verse 9. It says, who hath saved us and call called us with a holy calling, not according to our works. I want you to get this. Your calling, your purpose, your, your gift is not according to our, your works but according to his own purpose and grace. Mm, think about that for a moment. Amen. What God has put inside of you is not according to your own goodness, but he chose to put it in you based on his own purposes. In other words, the gift that you have is because God had a purpose for you to have that gift. It may not have been the one you wanted, it may not have been the one you asked for, it may not have been the one you signed up for, and perhaps you wanted another gift, but God had a purpose in mind when he gave you the gift that he gave you. It says, according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus. We come back to that. Amen. Before the world began. Be listen, before the world began. Think about it. Your gift was given before the world began. Amen. Verse 10 says, but is now, now, everybody say now. Now, now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior. Oh, man, this is, this is some deep stuff in here. I'm going to have to break this down for you. Man. Amen. Made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality, amen, to light through the gospel. There's some hidden gems in here. I want to make sure that you get out of what Paul is telling, amen, to Timothy. You know, Paul has a way. There's sometimes he's talking to people and they're a little bit more carnal and they're a little bit, you know, they can't handle it. And so he has to talk to them on a little bit more of a, of a, of a natural standpoint. He talked to the Corinthians and said, you know, y'all can't handle all that meat. Amen. I got to feed you with milk. I just giving you, amen, just a little bit, amen, because that's all you can handle right now. Let me deal with some of your behaviors because y'all acting crazy up in here. Amen. So he dealt with them according to where they were at. But his son, Timothy, his spiritual leading son, he was breaking down. Come on, somebody. He was breaking down, amen, some spiritual depth to him that everybody can't handle. But listen to what Paul is, Paul is, Paul is wrapping this thing up. Amen. He says in verse nine, he said that he who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, amen, but according to his own purpose and grace. Amen. The first thing we understand from this is that God had an, a design. He had an original design that included your purpose in it. Oh, I want you to grasp this. Amen. God has a design for this world. And before the world even began, that means he already knew. Come on, somebody. He knew where you were showing up in the plan. He knew the date. He knew the day. He knew the location. Amen. Before the world was even formed, he knew you by your name. He knew what you were going to look like, what color you be, male or female, how tall you be, how strong, how weak. He knew what kind of voice you would have, what kind of pitch would come out of your mouth. He knew the way you would think. He knew the way you would compute. He knew the way you would understand or misunderstand everything. And before you were even, that's why, amen, Jeremiah said, before you were formed in the belly, I already knew thee. God had a plan for you from the beginning. Understand this. You were in God's purposes. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on. You were in God's purposes from the very beginning. So if there's anybody out there that thought you were a mistake, anybody out there that thought, amen, you were an afterthought, anybody out there that thought God never knew or cared about you, you need to understand that from the very beginning of things, 
before you were even made, God already had a purpose for you. Somebody ought to declare God had a purpose for me. There's a purpose for me being here. I'm not just living a life of nothing. I'm not just living a no do, no good life. I have a purpose in being here. And I thank God. Somebody ought to thank God for your purpose right now. I said thank God for your purpose right now. Give him the glory for the purpose that he has for you. Hallelujah. He called us according to his purpose. According to his grace might not have been what you thought it was going to be. Some of y'all don't live where you thought you'd live. Come on, somebody. Some of you are not doing what you thought you should do. Hallelujah. But God had something in mind for you from the very beginning. Hallelujah. Mary may not have even been known. Hallelujah. If it wasn't, amen, for her, the son that she had. In other words, the purpose wasn't her, but she was the birthing of a purpose. Amen. That blessed us all. You may not see him working in you, but understand that God is putting you in the right place at the right time there may be somebody that you talk to along the way you might stop by somebody at the bus station and just say a word and create a whole nother channel of what God is going to do the way you're behaving at your job might not look like anybody notices but when somebody sees you God is putting you in the right place at the right time for his purposes that's why Jesus said not my will Lord but let your will be done whatever you want to do with me Lord use me for your purpose come on somebody say use me for your purpose hallelujah, hallelujah. you know what's even better than that that means that God shows you come on Come on, somebody. God shows you. Hallelujah. He gave you an assignment that he did not give to anybody else. He planted you in a place and chose you for the purpose that he had in mind for you. For whoever you were going to touch, whoever you were going to help, whatever situation you were going to say, however you were going to behave, at the right time in the right place, God chose you to be there. Somebody say, he chose me. Oh, you ought to be shouting by now. Hallelujah. I'm glad to know he chose me. Hallelujah. He chose me for not for what I wanted to do, but he chose me for what he wanted to do. He put me in his plan. He put me in his purpose. Hallelujah. He created you and he created you with purpose. He created you with purpose on the inside. You didn't realize it. You thought you were just a little seed in your mama's womb. Hallelujah. But when he created that seed, hallelujah, he put purpose and placed it inside of your DNA. Amen. He wrapped it right up inside of that so that when you came out of your mother's womb, you were already born with God's purpose inside of you. How many of you are glad to know today that you got God's purpose inside of you? Hallelujah called according to his purpose now here's another mystery amen that he says which amazes me he says he's called according to his purpose and grace he says which was given us in Christ Jesus mm. Yeah, mm. it was given us in Christ Jesus before the world amen began amen and so amen even through Christ amen we are receiving amen the revelation of our purpose. I, I didn't know what it was. There's something down in me. There's potential there. I don't understand it. Amen. But there's something about Christ. Amen. That be, brings forth a re revelation, the revealing of your purpose. He said it was in Christ, given us in Christ before the world began. But listen, verse 10 says, but is now, everybody say now, now, now made manifest by the appearing of the Savior Jesus Christ. It was given from the beginning, amen, through Christ. But now that Christ has come, now it can appear. It was already existing, amen, from the beginning. It was already lined up in the plan, amen, but you couldn't see it yet. You didn't have access to it yet, amen. It was there, but you could not access it. But now because Christ has been manifest, amen, now you have access to what already existed, amen. He told Timothy, he says, amen, it's revealed to you by the laying on of hands in verse 16, verse 6, but understand 
understand what he's saying about that is that that's only a confirmation of what was already there. When I lay on hands on you, it's not that I'm releasing to you. I am just releasing that which is already set and established inside of you. Amen. And so he's saying now it came, amen, through Christ. Amen. It came, amen, with a purpose. Amen. That was already established in you. Amen. You were gifted with this purpose. Amen. And instructed, amen, to give that purpose life again. Stir it up. Amen. It's there. It's got to be stirred up. But before we go there, verse 10 says, now he made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So now your purpose now becomes revealed. It was there. It existed, but it was not yet released, not yet revealed. When Jesus Christ came, now it became manifested. To manifest is to reveal it. Amen. So God created your purpose from the beginning. Amen. But now that Christ has come, it can be revealed in you. You weren't able to access it on your own, but because now of your relationship with Christ, that's why you need to stay connected. Tell somebody you got to stay connected. Because the gift becomes manifested in you because of your relationship with Christ. And so that potential seed that was in you from the beginning, now it's able to begin to grow. Now it's able to begin to, to, gener to generate, to, to grow and develop. Because when you connect up with Christ, the manifestation, it says it was given to Christ in the beginning. And now that Christ has been here, amen, it's manifested. In Are y'all still with me today? Hallelujah. He says, Christ is the pathway of your purpose. Come on, get that. Christ is the pathway to the purpose that God has. Christ opens up the opportunity to you, amen, for your purpose. In other words, Jesus revives our original purpose in our lives. You were created, amen, by God for dominion. Anybody remember that? Let us make man, amen, in our image and in our likeness. God was giving Christ, amen, the map, the road map, the plan for what he was about to do with you back before, amen, the world was created. Let us make man in our image and our likeness and give him dominion over the fish of the seas and the fall of the air. Amen. God was created. He was saying, yeah, this is what he's going to be. This is what they're going to do. This is what's going to happen with him. He was putting all that together, amen, and handing it over to Christ. This is what's going to happen out of these people. I know they're going to go down into some rut for a minute, amen. They're going to go down in sin, amen, because of that serpent. But when you come on the scene, you're going to bring to them and manifest to them the purpose for which I originally made them. That means that God is calling us back to dominion, calling us back to authority, calling us back to being in his image and in his likeness, just like he planned. You might have thought you lost it, but because of Christ, it is reestablished and reaffirmed in us once again. The Bible said Jesus came and went all the way down to hell to take back the keys to the kingdom, to take back authority and come back up and return them back to us. Jesus came to manifest to you what God had, all, had made you to do and to be from the beginning. Well, I wish somebody would get this today. I wish somebody would get this today. Look at, man, he's throwing out some mind-blowing stuff here. He's throwing out here. He says, amen, it's made to, to reveal your purpose now through Christ. Now that you're connected back to Christ, you can understand the purpose and intention that God has installed in you. Now look at one more verse in verse 14 here. Amen. Just jump down for a moment to verse 14. And it says, that good thing which was committed unto us, amen, thee keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth, oh, oh, look, look, look at here. Keep by the Holy Ghost. So listen, God designed it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jesus provided access. And now we keep it, come on, through the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Spirit is what gives us the power to maintain that calling, that purpose, that anointing that God um, intended for us from the beginning. So thank God he designed it from the beginning. Amen. And then he brought it to us and released it through Jesus Christ. But how do I keep on keeping on? The power 
power of the Holy Spirit in my life. Amen. Keeps me anointed. Keeps me inspired. When the devil comes against you and tries to wear you down, it's that Holy Spirit inside of you that will keep you in alignment with your gift. That'll keep you stirring it up. That'll keep you on fire. Amen. How many of you need? No, we need to stay on fire sometimes. Because if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves at home weeping in a corner somewhere. Somebody's been there already. Amen. By your bedside. Amen. Just weeping, wondering why you even are here. Amen. Depressed and sorrowful as the devil tries to turn you out. Come on, somebody knows what I'm talking about. Amen. But the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The power of the anointing of God is what will keep you through it all. When the trouble comes your way, I'm still anointed. Hallelujah. When problems come my way, I'm still anointed. Hallelujah. When the devil tries to trip me up, no, 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 no. I'm still anointed. I've still got my purpose. Amen. My gift is still inside of me and I'm ready to stir it up one more time. Hallelujah. The anointing of God enables me to stir it up when the devil is trying to take me down. When he's talking about me, when he's trying to stop me on the side of the road, it's the power of God that will keep me going, keep me inspired, keep me anointed when what should have taken me down will not work because the Holy Spirit is keeping me. Anybody know it's keeping you today? Anybody know it's holding you today? Anybody know it's lifting you up today? When you should be done, the power of God is still keeping you. When you should have quit, the power of God is still pushing you. When you felt like you couldn't walk on your own, the power of God is lifting you. How many of you know you're kept by the power of the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Somebody say, stir it up. <laughs> Now, that's where we go back to the beginning on this, uh, because he told Timothy, I just told you all that uh, to remind you of who you are uh, and remind you of what God has done uh, and to ensure you, you have all the power you need. Somebody ought to be grateful for that right now. You have all the power you need uh, now to do what I called you to do from the beginning, but it still comes down to you. You can either sit there, amen, and whine and cry about things that are going wrong, uh, or you can and get up and stir up the gift that is in you. It comes down to you. He's telling them, listen, God has already done the work. He already created it before the beginning. He revealed it through Christ. He's given you the power of the Holy Spirit. But somebody say, it's up to you now. It's up to you now to make up your mind that I'm going to get up from here and stir up this gift that God has given me. I'm not going to sit by anymore and allow things that just go past me. I'm not going to let the devil keep me quiet. I'm going to open up my mouth and declare the will and the word of God. I'm stirring up what's inside of me now. I'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I'll speak with new tongues. I'll do the work of God. I'll open up doors where the doors seem to be closed. I'll prophesy. I'll believe for signs and wonders and miracles. I'll believe for God's work to to be done somebody say stir it up it's already in the church it's already in the house the gifts have already been planted God has already seated it it just takes somebody who's going to have a mind to get up and stir up your gift stir it up stir it up stir it up hallelujah I came to tell you it's time now for a revival that means it's time for us to revive up that which was inside of us it used to be there but I lost it somewhere along the way but it's time right now to stir up your gift. Somebody say, stir up your gift. Look at somebody and tell them, stir up your gift. Because the Bible says every one of us has a gift that comes from God. Every one of us has something. It's time to stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Come on, somebody stir it up. Stir up your gift. Say, I'm ready to be used. I'm ready to do what God has called me to do. I'm ready to be used by God. Somebody stir it up up today hallelujah stir it up today stir up the gift that's within us it is time for revival it is time for us to get up 
it is time for us to remember, hallelujah, it's still inside of you. <laughs> Paul said, I know it's inside of you. <laughs> you might not feel like it right now. <laughs> you may not see it around you right now, but I know it's inside of you. There's no question of it. God has given you the gift. Sometimes you wonder yourself, amen, what am I doing and what is God doing with me? But I just came to declare to you, there's a gift inside of you and it's up to you right now to step up and stir up that gift stop waiting for somebody else to do it oh did y'all hear what I said stop waiting for somebody else to stir up your gift stop waiting for somebody else to shake it out of you he told Timothy I already laid hands on you it's up to you now boy stir up that gift stir it up stir it up stir it up Sometimes we got to do the works that we used to do to get the results that we used to have. Did you hear what I just said? Sometimes you got to get back, amen, to where you used to be. When you used to go down on your knees, when nobody had to call for the church to come together, you prayed and you fasted all on your own. Some of you had a relationship with God, amen, that you were allowed to become nominal and average when God has actually called you to a mountaintop and you settled for the valley. But you got to stir up your gift. We want to see the results happen. But we don't want to do what we used to do to get the results. But if you want a revival, stop waiting for somebody to come through and preach it out of you. Stop waiting, amen, for the Holy Spirit to just drop. The Holy Spirit already dropped. Stop waiting for somebody to knock you down and knock you out. Look inside of yourself. Stir up that gift. It's time for revival. It's time to make up your mind to let God use you and let God have his way with you. Because there's something inside of you that was there from day one. And let me tell you something about the devil. The devil is an accuser of the brethren. He's the one that makes you feel condemned. Oh, I can never work like that again. I can never be used like that. Oh, it's too late. No, I can't, I can't do anything. That's the devil. Tell somebody that's the devil. Back, tell the devil that's the devil. Devil, we know it's you. The accuser of the brethren trying to tell you you can't work for God anymore. No, you've, you've been too bad. You've been too wrong. I mean, you went the wrong direction. You made some wrong decisions. You failed and you've lost tell the devil you haven't lost yet because God hasn't lost Christ did not lose and I'm glad to know I didn't fight this battle on my own but God has fought my battle mighty warrior great in battle he fights my battle tell somebody he fights my battles so even though you might have thought you lost Jesus has won the battle for your soul for your spirit and we just learned here he fought the battle for your purpose it was assigned to him glory to God God assigned your purpose to Christ God assigns your purpose to Christ from the very beginning and when Christ came he manifested that amen which was called to be inside of you glory to God Talk about safe travels. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Forget about FedEx and DHL. Hallelujah. God was sending it first class, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 To reveal into you your purpose. And regardless of what the devil might say, it's still there. Paul says, stir it up, son. Stir it up, daughter. Stir it up now. You've been sitting there too. You've been crying too long. You've been, you've been waiting. You've been shy. You've been humble. You've been allowing the devil to, to keep your mouth shut too long. Stir it up. Stir it up. I know it's in you. I know it's there. I know it's in you. You just need to get up and stir it up. Today the Lord speaks to us today. Encourage and remind us there is a gift that's in you. I said, there is a gift that is in you.